Here are the calculations for how we have determined the power of the ECAT. Here is the Vienne equation to calculate the temperature of the plasma. Tk equals 2900 divided by lambda, where Tk is the temperature in Kelvin. Lambda is the wavelength of the radiation that we have seen with the spectrometer. 2900 is the Vienne constant. Substituting in the equation, we have the temperature is 2900 divided by 0 0.3575, which is the wavelength that you have seen in the spectrometer reading. Note that the spectrometer displayed 357, but that was in nanometers, while the Vienne equation is in microns. Therefore, since 1 micron is 1,000 nanometers, we have 0 0.357 microns. The temperature of the plasma in that very limited part of the plasma that you have seen, which is the hottest part, which is the part that we will use to calculate the power, is 8,111 Kelvin. For your curiosity, this is equal to 8,384 Celsius degrees. Now, we use this temperature with the Boltzmann equation to calculate the power of the ECAT. Now we can see watts equals sigma times epsilon times T to the fourth power times S. Sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 12th power. It would be 10 to the minus 8th if we were calculating square meters. But since we are calculating square centimeters, it is 10 to the minus 12th. Epsilon is the emissivity for the plasma that is the black body. It should be 1, but we calculate 0 0.9, assuming the black body is not perfect. t to the 4th power is 8,111 to the 4th, which totals 4.3 times 10 to the 15th power. s is the surface in square centimeters. This square that we consider is one square centimeter because the area that we have seen that is the area around the cathode is 1.1 centimeters long and has a diameter of 0 0.3 centimeters. Substituting in equation 2 we have watts equals 5.67 times 0 0.9 times 4.3 times 10 to the 15th power times 10 to the negative 12th power times 1, which totals 21,942 watts, which is 21.9 kilowatts of power which means we make an energy equal to 21.9 kilowatt hours per hour. Now we look at the energy consumed by the system so that we can calculate the coefficient of power. First, we will call E1 the energy consumed by the control panel. This is the total energy that comes from the outlet plug of the grid. As we have seen, we have 380 watt-hours per hour of energy consumed. This is the total of energy that goes to the cooling system and the ECAT and everything else. The energy that is not consumed by the ECAT is completely recovered by the heat exchanger. The heat dissipated by the control panel 
is recovered with a COP of 0 0.9. Then we see E2 is the energy consumed by the ECAT, which is the energy that actually enters the ECAT. As we have seen, we have a voltage of 0 0.25 volts. The oscilloscope measured 50 millivolts times 5, which is 250 millivolts. That is equal to 0.25 volts. We have seen that the resistance along the cable that supplies energy to the ECAT is 78 ohms. Ohm's law states that amps equals volts divided by resistance. So substituting we get amps equals 0 0.25 divided by 78 which equals 0 0.0032. When we make the calculation of watts we get 0 0.25 times 0 0.0032 which equals 0 0.0008 watt hours per hour. Therefore the ECAT consumes 0 0.0008 watt hours per hour. As you can see the COP considering both the energy that is consumed by the cooling system plus the energy that is consumed by the ECAT, we have 21,942 watt hour per hour produced divided by 380 watt hour per hour consumed. And we have a coefficient of performance of 57. However, if we consider that the 380 watts are recovered by the radiator of the control panel, and if we consider only the energy consumed by the ECAT, we have 21,942 watt hours per hour produced divided by 0 0.0008 watt hours per hour consumed. This means self sustaining mode. To consider the calorimetry, we are heating a room of a factory that has a surface of about 3,000 square feet, which is about 300 square meters, and its height is about 4 meters, which is a little less than 14 feet. For the T outside, the calculation that was made when the temperature was 0 degrees Celsius outside or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the room temperature was about 16 degrees Celsius, which is about 61 degrees Fahrenheit. To obtain this result with normal heaters would require between 20 and 22 kilowatt rating, so you would need a boiler of about 20 to 22 kilowatts of power to heat up in these conditions with these results. The fan is 5,500 effective cubic meters per hour, which sums up to 6,700 kilograms. We have a delta T of 16 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of air is 0 0.17 more or less. The power is 6,700 times 0 0.17 times 16 and makes about 20.5 kilowatts of power, or if you prefer, 20.5 kilowatts hours per hour of energy. We also made a test with an airflow of 330 effective cubic meters per hour, obtaining a delta T of 312 Celsius. You may use the same equation and you again will arrive to a power of about 2100 kilowatt hours per hour. Now about the heat that is dissipated by the cooling system. It is recovered because as you have seen 
we get from the fan of 250 effective cubic meters per hour, we get using the same equation about 300 watts. We are consuming 380, so the COP of the cooling system is about 0 0.9.